What would you do if you found that that traditional path that you thought that you had chosen didn't align with your calling? Would you stay the course or would you decide to take a leap? Today's featured guest has decided to make her mark on Jamaica's art scene in paint. Let's meet Abra. The only place to start is, who are you? <laughs> well, you said you, the question you posed is, who are you? This is not a job interview. But, but, but tell me, if you were to kind of sum yourself up as a person, as a, a creative, as an entrepreneurship, who would you say you are? Um, I, I'm saying I'm a trying girl. <laughs> I'm very okay. trying. Yes. Um, why I say that? Because... My name is Dominic, of course. Mm -hmm. My middle name is Abra. Yes, I googled that. And Ghanaian, right? Yes, uh -huh. my mom, she's from Ghana, West Africa. Nice. So you're given a name based on the day you were born. So I was born on a Tuesday. Yes, yes. Tuesday born is Abra, right. hence the name. Mm -hmm. So that's a, the unique thing about me, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. However, um, when I say I'm a trying girl, I like to try new things. I'm very adventurous. Mm -hmm. I like anything that's different from the norm. So were you super adventurous and like creative when you were younger, you no. think? No, actually, no. yes, okay. I was, but okay. in a strange way. Okay. Like when I say strange, yeah. like um, I had a bunch of friends or neighbors based on my living experience. It was like a lot of kids around while growing up and with them, we were so creative to the point, like if we we're, if we're going to create like a scene to see we're having a shop, we're selling a shop, right. or we have a shop. Right, right. So our shop experience is taking out everything from the garbage bin and <laughs> creating our shop. Okay. And we have days when we're like, oh, let's do, um, let's be in the office. Okay. We're gonna be office yeah. attendants and yada yada. Okay. So we would dress up in our parents' clothes and act like, you know, that's, that's the difference. Okay. Then there was this interesting moment with me while growing up. Um, it was just me, everybody was, I don't know where they were, but I found myself mudding or creating mud or adding water to the dirt and make cookies and put them in the sun to dry because it's my bakery. So that was my initial um, idea. So I, I think that stems to spark the creativity in me. And, you know, but over time, you know, life experiences kind of change that. And, you, and I like lost myself in, in between okay. that. So when I say that, it's, it's like, um, so over time, I've learned to try things, do things, no matter how complicated it is, just do it because, and with doing that, I eventually form myself, right? So hence, I am an artist today. You are the artist <laughs> today, but the, the, the cookie maker with mud. <laughs> so I feel like, so were you selling the cookies? Like, no, do you feel I like you're on the sun? Uh -huh. I was like, okay, let's see if it's going to really dry into a cookie and then I break them apart to see if it really dried as hard as a cookie. Okay. So that was the idea at the time. But it was fascinating because who does that? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, you know what? Interestingly, I used to make mud pies, but we're not going to talk okay. about that. Yes, and sell them. Oh, wow. <laughs> but anyway, so that's the question that I want to, to ask you. Did you ever feel like you were, you're obviously a creative, creative child? Enterprising, any at all, ever felt like business is where you'd end up? I didn't think of entrepreneurship. I didn't think of business because, as I said, I feel like there was just something within me that wants to be different or is just different from anything else. Like, I, I don't know, I couldn't explain it, but I just let life be as it is. So, um, I wouldn't say I was that type of person who wanted to own a business or be an entrepreneur. I think it just happened, you know? So that was, that was what happened to me. Wow. So we are currently at zero. Nobody, nobody thus far has what they did in school right. directly translates. So you were a? <sighs> okay, so high school, let's start there. Okay, let's start there. I used to go to Tarrant High School. Okay. From Tarrant High School, I went to Excelsior Community College. Nice. Then I finished there. At Excelsior Community College, I was doing hospitality and tourism management. Okay. At that time, I wanted to become a baker. Nice. A pastry chef. Okay. Mud pies to real life. Nice. Right. Nice. Okay. So that's where I, I, um, I went to school right. first. 
But then um, I didn't finish. I don't know what happened during that time, but I think there was some life change of experiences. Right. So I, I really didn't complete that. Um, moving forward, I started to work. Um, and with working, I eventually got to that point where I needed to continue studying. So right. I decided to apply for the UTEC mm -hmm. to do the same thing. Hospitality. Right. So I did that, but then I had the opportunity to go to Belize. Mm -hmm. So I did went to Belize for the first time um, to visit my mom because it has been a very long extended period. I haven't seen her because she was working abroad. So yeah, I had that opportunity to go to Belize and here I am, first time leaving the country and I'm going to a whole new world. So I went there and I was like, oh my gosh, this country is beautiful. And then I was like, okay. So it was like a time where I was still trying to find myself. So, and while I was there, I was like, okay, let, let me see if I can stay because then it would be great for me to just spend time, more time with my mom at least because it was an extended period without her. So I, I initially was caught in between staying in Belize or going to UTEC. Mm -hmm. So that's when I had to make a decision, which I did, which was to stay there. Um, even though I still got accepted into the program at UTEC. So I, I went to Belize, stayed there for a while. And while I was there, I was like, okay, I'm here. What am I going to do with my life? Hmm. I wasn't sure. So before we go into that, it sounds like you have been through quite a bit of transitioning. What do you think makes you so flexible, so adaptable? Um, and do you think that that has kind of gotten you to where you want to be with your business? Right. I, I, I really don't. I think it's just my personality. I'm very adaptable to anything once I put my mind to it. And that's what works for me. But I'm always aiming for that thing within me that I'm trying to find or what's pounding on me to like get or do because you know everyone has a calling and no matter what you do in life that call is gonna keep calling until you achieve whatever it's calling right or listen at least so right and try so that's and I think the experiences that I had it was necessary um, just for development as a person so it was necessary in my opinion so hence the transitions so there you are, you're in Belize, you've gotten to see mommy, yay! yay. What happens next? So, while I was in Belize, um, I was there, you know, um, my mom was working and I was with her while she was working and while with her, I met a Nigerian guy. So we were there and he was basically, you know, in a foreign country, especially that tourist prone country, you find a lot of people engaging in conversation just to know who you are. They're traveling, they want to know who you are, blah, blah, blah. So that's what happened. He was like having a conversation with me, like, hey, how are you doing? Um, where are you from? Because you're not Belizean. Um, and I told him and he's like, what are you doing here? And I'm like, my mom's here. So I'm here and blah 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 so he was like telling me he's a med student in Berlin like med student interesting so he started asking like what am I doing with life and what I do I was like I'm just here winging it trying to figure it out <laughs> okay know? so that's where I'm at but my dreams and aspirations is to be in the hospitality tourism management and he was like oh what is that <laughs> <laughs> trying to explain it to him and he just could not get it right. so I was like okay fine um, so he asked if I ever thought about becoming a doctor. And I was like, um, no, because I don't like blood. I don't like simply in pain. And I'll be crying if they're crying. So no. Okay. Um, so it was that type of experience. And then I, he was like, you should probably think about it because it's a great experience and everything. So I was like, OK. So it got to the point where he you know, started talking to my mom and told my mom about his experience in Belize as being a doctor there and whatever. Then he said, why don't you try to like apply for the school there? So I was like, um, mm, just because my mom wants me to, I'm doing it. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I get that. Just yeah. Because I initially thought I would not get through because right. I was just like, all my qualifications are not med or right. science related. Right. So how in the world I could, I only had one science subject. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay. Um, if, uh, right. The trying <laughs> girl in me. I right. was like, okay, I'm going to try apply for the pre-med program. Okay. I have to start there because you can't just jump into medicine. Right, so it's like pre-med program. Luckily I got there and I was like, how? Oh. <laughs> Questionable. You know? I was questioning and then I went through the program. 
first first couple months i was struggling huh. with the subjects it was just drastic change for me because it's been a while out of school and it's right. like how the hell am i going to do this until i i kind of brace myself and like brown myself that this is where you are now and this is what you're doing mm -hmm. so get your head in the game and that's when I start to really focus and start to study, start to do what I need to do to get to the level of where they want me to be. Because it was an intense program, yeah. so you had to be on top of it. Monday to Sunday. Like you had, if you're not studying, you have to be doing some form of clinical rotation. If you're not doing that, you just always engage. I keep you so engaged, so on. Like every every day, you have to be doing something. So, so you as it a, was as a exactly. It was. It was. At the time, I was flowing because I was high on just being there. So for the first two years, I got through the program. Um, I met a lot of people, so that kind of keep me, you know, engaged, engaged and, and still right. So I had like-minded people around, which helped the process. Right. Um, straight up until 2020, 2021. Sorry, 2020, 2019. Sorry, 2019. 2019, that's when I start feeling the, the pain and pangs of that constant, constant going to school. If I'm not going to school, I'm doing community programs. Yeah, it hit me to the point where I was just not feeling school anymore. I didn't want to study, I didn't, and it was my last semester. I was like, this is hell. <laughs> and my friend, my very good friend in Belize, um, one of my schoolmates, Erin, she was like, hmm. I have to get you back on track, Dominic. You can't give up. You're at the last point. How can you give up right now? And I'm like, it's like something just ripped out of me. Like, this is not you, and this is not where you're supposed to be, right? That's exactly how I felt during that time. And then I was like, okay. And then the pandemic hit. Um, that's when, um, I think it's 2019 of March, when it was announced that it's a whole pandemic. 2020. 2020, sorry, that's the year. Right, <laughs> 2020, that's when they, it, we got the news that everybody had to go home, so, because most of the students there were from America, so all of them went back home. I was stuck there because my mom was still working there, still lived there, all that jazz. So I was like, okay, I don't know what's gonna happen next, so I did my last couple exams. I passed everything, luckily, because I was not in the mood to study, but I tried to pull myself to at least pass, which I did. But then after that, I was like, okay, school is done, this feeling is back. What what is, right, yeah. like, whoo, yeah. I had a, a strange moment of trying, to, like it was a moment of saying, this is not you, why are you here? What are you doing? Where are you going next? And I was just like, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> so many people, I, I personally have that experience as well, where you feel like if you're not in something or doing something that adds value to you and the way you feel, it's a big deal. Do you think, I mean, you obviously listened. I did. Eventually. I did. Okay. It was really stressful, though. Mm -hmm. The process of listening, it was stressful because, you know, you're listening to your parents. Mm -hmm. uh, my mom is African. If it's not traditional mm -hmm. jobs, yes. it's, it's, it's nothing. What is that? <laughs> right. <laughs> if it is not doctor <laughs> or lawyer, you're, in, in, yeah. you're not doing it, yeah. right? So it, it was a, a moment I even questioned God, too, because I was just like, you made me spend so much years here. Why didn't you warn me earlier? That now is the time you yeah. want to warn me? Like, I spent so much money. I could have used that to do something else. You know what I mean? Right. So it was that point where I was just like, okay. And I broke down so hard to the point I heard the voice said to me, why don't you sell your paintings? And so wait, you were painting all of this time? Yes. How did, how, what? During the point of school, there were moments when I wanted to do something different mm -hmm. and just to get my mind off school. And that was when I decided to start painting. Um, painting in a sense where I didn't know I could paint, first of all. I didn't know, I never drew in my life ever. I just went on Pinterest, okay. got my canvas, because okay. canvas give you everything that you need to get, right? I did that. It's like, okay, look for an image or a subject. Okay. And I sketched it in a way that I could draw, um, paint it, and that's exactly what I did. And luckily, I was so shocked to myself, like, how the hell did I know that I could paint? I didn't know until I did it. So, right. and, then I, <laughs> and then I was like, you know what? 
after doing that i realized it was so relaxing mm. especially the painting the sketching part is, is sometimes complicated for me because i don't know any foundation of drawing but i just do it anyways but the painting aspect of it it brings to life the sketch that i'm trying to achieve right. and that's when that's when i realized hey i can actually paint and oh my god mm. So, so you're out here painting for yourself to relax. Just because, right. So pandemic hits, school is closed. Right. The, the spirit is speaking in you. Right. So that's when um, I was just like, okay, what are you saying? Why don't you sell your paintings? So I was like, okay, how am I gonna sell my paintings again? Who's it's a pan, right. Yes. I was like, who's gonna buy? It's a pandemic, yeah. who's spending money? Right. Nobody. Right. Okay, so the voice was like, um, why don't you sell it on Marketplace Facebook? Okay. Um, when I say voice, it's like the thought okay. came to me. Yeah. I was like, Facebook Marketplace, I don't even know how to word this. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna try. So I found paintings um, online that speaks about like birthday celebration or Father's Day, Mother's Day art. So I made a post on the Facebook marketplace in the leads. And I was like, hey, if you're looking for a unique gift to give for birthday, just because gift or anything of the sort, um, hey, why don't you think about doing a handmade painting, which is more, you know, memorable. Yeah, so, custom. Right, yeah. customized. This yeah. is my price. Yeah. At that time, it was very cheap. Okay. So, <laughs> I was okay. like, here it is, and my God. In two hours, I got over 100 messages on ah. Facebook. <laughs> oh, oh my God. Yes, yes. I was like, two hours? In two hours, oh, I got 100, 100 messages. And I was like, I don't have canvas. Where am I gonna get canvas? Please, I know this crazy it is. Right. So I was like, okay, there is a store, I'm gonna get them. Um, it was closed down, but luckily that day, the lady was outside at her store and I was begging her to go into her store to just get canvas. Yes. And she let me. So, and that was the only way I could get the canvas out. Um, so that's when I started painting and selling them. And I sold so many paintings. Oh, I, I think I sold over 100 paintings from that period to December. Yes. Okay. Don't ask me how I did it. Hold on, but hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> okay, so one thing I want to address. So, obviously, you're very, again, trying girl. But a lot of people tend to be afraid of putting themselves out there, right? A lot of people think, oh, okay, all right, I have this idea, but it needs to be perfect. I need to think everything through. I need to, like, what would you say to somebody who thinks that they need to do that? Because obviously, there's something in you that's just like, let me put myself out there. How do you get that confidence to put yourself um, out there? The confidence, I, I, I believe it comes with trusting yourself. Mm, okay. if, if you're not trusting, not everybody say they, well, most persons would say they trust themselves. Mm. But trusting that even if it don't work out, mm. at least you tried. Yeah. So that's the point, just do it. That's the only way you find out, and it doesn't hurt to try. If it does hurt, then sorry. Yeah. But at the same time, just still do it. And that's where I believe I get all my confidence from. It doesn't care what happened next. Yeah. I just do it and hope for the best. Do you feel like because you have been through so many transitive moments, yeah. it feels like, oh, okay, all right, you cool. This is just, easier to this, yeah. I think so. And as I said earlier, it's necessary to process of everything that I went through. Um, it really moves me to learn that things are going to change, nothing lasts forever sometimes and you just have to work with the process. If there is a work that needs to get done within you, you're going to go through so many life challenges, setbacks, all of that's going to be contributed to the end goal and it molds you into a better person to handle situations, to handle everything that else that's going to come with that main goal, right? And I think those things really help me to you know be able to manage or adapt to any situation mm -hmm. and maybe i'm just blessed with that <laughs> maybe i'm just because not every because i might be saying this and it seems so easy to say mm -hmm. but for many people no terrified. yeah terrified of that. and i think we like safety yes 
we love safety and for some people it's it's hard to jump into the unknown waters i'm not gonna tell it's easy for me it wasn't because the voice of your parents others around you trying to be who you think you is and then it's, it's a lot and then it becomes so pressuring and then you don't know exactly what to do and at the end of the day you have to listen to yourself <laughs> Sometimes your own self is guiding you sometimes. YOLO. So you have to just do it. And I think the experience in Belize really helped me because a lot of people were like that in Belize because they're traveling for whatever reason. Some are just there backpacking, don't know what's the next step. They're just there because, hey, yeah. I'm living in the moment. Yeah. You get me? So those experiences, um, I adapt and that's, that's, that's what happened for me. Yeah, that's major. I think it's so important to see other people right. do the things that you want to do because yes. it makes you feel more achievable right all right so you sell you 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 were selling you sold a hundred papers cheap cheap that's why but the point was to get better at what i was doing so i saw a lot of paintings that really suck but yeah. people still wanted it right. and they didn't say anything they were like oh my god this looks so great i love yeah. it and i was like are you kidding me? <laughs> I tried so hard. Right. And I find myself painting more at night than in days. Mm. So I don't know, my creative process comes at night. I don't know, but in the daytime, I'm not painting. I, you find me painting in the nighttime. The night, night owl. Right. All right, so you've sold your 100 paintings cheap, but obviously yesterday's price is not today's price because you are currently in Jamaica. Yes. And you are, you started your business, yes. your Abra, sip and paint, paint and sip with Abra, right. right? In 2020. In 2020 of June. So I came back to Jamaica in 2021. We're in 2021. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> 2021. Right. So I came back wow. um, to Jamaica in So I came back um, trusting that Actually, it was a funny story to come back, but I came back um, to just start doing me, basically. I didn't want to hear my mom's voice anymore. I didn't want to anybody else to say, do this, do yes, that. Yes. It was a process where I needed to come back and do me. Yes. So that's what I did. And my thought was to come back and paint. Yes. Um, but before that, I should tell you, I met an artist in Belize who okay. taught me a lot of techniques in painting because she saw me on, Insta on the Facebook page promoting my art. She loved it and she hired me on the spot while in Belize. That was in January okay. in 2021. Okay. And I was like, sure, helping her for quite a few times. Um, and then she introduced me to teaching paint and sips, doing paint and sips for the tourists. And they loved it. So I was like, oh my gosh, I enjoyed this so much. Mm -hmm. Like, I just love meeting people. One, two, helping them to create is amazing. So came back to Billy, came back to Jamaica and I was like, I want to do this. I want to continue to do this. And I was just like, okay, this is my plan. Because I had a whole plan in my head. And I was just and like... Jamaica is a tough market. Exactly. Okay. That was my thought. But then yeah. I was like... I got this. I'm gonna, okay, I know what I'm doing. Again, yeah. I did it before. Why can't I still do it in Jamaica? Right. So the fearful thing, I was like, maybe they won't be as receptive as the, um, the American people. But right. it's okay. I'm going to still do it, put myself yeah. out there, and make it Jamaicanized at yeah. least so yeah. that they were receptive to it. So I made my post, um, Mobile Sip and Paint. Mm -hmm. That's my service. I come to your location, um, any event, all occasion, birthday, anniversary, any painting that you desire, I can create it and teach it to you. Ooh. That's the idea, yeah. right? Unlock the art. Right. So I, I am all for teaching people to explore their creativity because what art did for me, that's exactly what I'm trying to give back to them. Um, in just finding peace, relaxation, enjoyment, enjoyment and fun, right? Yes, back to themselves too. Right. Like, that is exactly what my, my, my plan was. So I came back, promoted it once, got my first client, and I was like... Hold on, again. Like, <laughs> this, is, this is crazy to me. It sounds crazy, but you know, alignment. Yes, everything. You just can't miss it. Yeah. Once you follow that voice, inner voice, that small voice, once you believe in it, I mean, it's going to direct you. And no matter what else, once you follow that direction, it's going to work out. No, no matter if you don't know what's going to happen next, because I really don't know what happens next. I just do what I have to do. Um, so 
I made my first post on Facebook and Instagram, the ad, and push it for a month. I got my first client in September of 2021. When I got my first client, uh, it was pretty nerve wracking because it's new back in Jamaica. I don't know how they're going to be receptive. And it was extremely good. I went to a family home, yeah. what is their backyard, yeah. a mom and her daughters. Okay amazing vibe <laughs> so and not only that i provided the wine for them so that's another oh. experience too right. where you don't have to go and look for the wine i come to your house you don't have to you clean up nothing everything exactly okay. so okay. i i do that the only thing i don't do is to provide you tables and chair okay. so the point is to come to you once you have that then i bring the experience and everything else right the art supplies and the wine right yeah. so that's exactly what i did straight up until december oh my gosh business picked up by the second right okay and i i was i wasn't expecting it right. but i found the i found the help because my partner thank god to him yeah. i mean he yeah. helped me to yeah. keep on my feet yeah. and in december i had my largest party Ooh, 100 so people Give God thanks. Wow. <laughs> and this was with <laughs> Q Max Wealth Management. Thanks right. to Ava for believing in me. Okay. She found the ad. She saw the ad on Facebook and she's like, hey, it's a really great idea and I really want to bring this as a customer appreciation day for my clients and I think you're the perfect person. So I did that and I was able to bring the pain party to them at Turnover. And that was my biggest event, both online and in person. Wow. And it was so much fun. Yeah. And it was an experience. Mm -hmm. So um, from there on, we are now in what, March? Yes. Oh. Business is still booming, thank God. <laughs> and, and I'm still giving them what they ask for, yeah. um, tweak along the way so that you can bring whatever your client wants or needs. So that's what, I, what I'm doing currently as far as my mobile spending is concerned. So. so, I mean, you're obviously delivering smiles, delivering fantastic <laughs> experiences. But what would you say to somebody who's like, a lot of people think creatives can't run businesses. That's a lie. That's a lie. Because I think it's a, a lot of narrative behind being artistic. And some people believe that, oh, you need to be successful before you yes. can do what you want yes, to do. Yes, what you love. Right? Um, but it can be scary at first to jump into. But if you know what you're doing, then I don't think it would be as bad as how people make it seem. So I would say that you just have to try it. <laughs> Become a triangle. I mean, you just do it. <laughs> Jump into the pool, yeah. the ocean. Yeah. You can't know everything in this life. Yeah. You cannot. So you have to just put yourself out there. Put everything that you, you have at the moment. Use what you have until you build on top of that. I mean, so, so you've obviously been building from strength to strength in such a short time. You've had such a crazy trajectory. What do you wish that you had known when you got started? Whether it's a technical thing, whether it's a personal or emotional thing. Like how would, what, how would you think you would have changed things? What would you want to have known? Right now, I, I then, um, I don't know. I think I don't, I don't, I think, I don't think I regret anything. Mm. At first I was regretting everything, especially being back in Belize, but it kind of shows me that I needed to find myself. That was the aim, really, because I've been begging to find myself, so here was your opportunity. Right. But it was one that allows me to still exist or still, you know, do what I got to do in life until that point and still mold me into a person that I need to be for my second thing, right? Yeah. So that is exactly what I believe really helped um, for me. You've, mo you've become this fantastic, vibrant personality, of course, that's you know, bringing your, your business to so many people. What would be your final thought to maybe somebody like you in a medical program, doing something that I guess they don't really love, yeah. but that little spirit is, is, yeah. is there and it's going at them. Like, what do you think you would, you would say? What kind of advice would you give? I would say do what you love. Um, at the end of the day, you'll be happier, fulfilled. You'll feel like you're doing your purpose and that's what really matters, doing what you're created to do. 
because um, at the end of the day when you're 50 60 you're gonna think back on that and you're gonna be like I wasted it or I didn't do what I really wanted to do um, so instead of going through all of that why not still try and see what was what's gonna happen basically if you've never been a trying person before Dominique is here to tell you to give trying a try connect to your inner self and do not ignore that voice that is going off in your head in your heart wherever it is it's okay to fail it's okay to try it's okay to have to start again but out of everything that you need to do, just ensure that you try and start.